Joe Flacco went from a Super Bowl MVP to a third string quarterback in just a matter of years. But what's even crazier than that rapid fall was how Flacco got to the NFL. One could say it was almost accidental. As a high schooler, Joe didn't even realize colleges were scouting him until he received a scholarship offer in the mail. And following a rough junior season in college, he wanted to go play baseball instead. So how did Joe Flacco go from thinking his football career was over before he even got into the league to where he is now? We're about to find out because this is what they aren't telling you about the rise, fall, and comeback of Joe Flacco. Joe Flacco grew up in Audubon, New Jersey. Once he reached high school, he was a three-sport athlete playing football, basketball, and baseball. Flacco became Autobahn's starting quarterback his sophomore year, but in his three years as the team's QB1, they never had a record better than 5-5. Five and five. The high school wasn't one of those football powerhouses, so there weren't many talented players there. The tallest wide receiver was 5'10", and no wideout broke a 40-yard dash time of 4'9". And for reference, Flacco ran a 4'8'6'40 at the Combine, a few years later. Despite the team's struggles, Flacco's rocket arm caught the attention of college scouts. By the end of his high school career, Joe was a three-star recruit and the 39th ranked quarterback in the class of 2003. He received six scholarship offers from Rutgers, Akron, Pittsburgh, Temple, UCF, and Virginia Tech. Flacco ultimately committed to Pittsburgh, but things didn't go as expected for Joe once he arrived on campus. After redshirting his freshman year, Flacco was named the team's backup the following season behind starter Ty Tyler Palco. Palco was a year older than Flacco. He was a four-star recruit and ranked as the eighth best quarterback in the nation coming out of high school. And guess what? He lived up to the hype. In his first season as the Panthers starter, he threw the most touchdowns in the Big East and was named the team's MVP. In spring of the following year, Palco was named the team's starting QB yet again. Flacco felt he would never see the field with Palco there, so he decided to transfer. But the thing is, Flacco didn't transfer to an FBS school. He transferred to a school a level below that. Delaware, an FCS school. Also, sorry guys, my voice sounds super nasally and disgusting. I've just been sick for five days and haven't been able to talk, but you know, the first thing I gotta do when I get my voice back is record an in-depth video on the career of Joe Flacco. After arriving on campus in 2005, Flacco had to sit out for the whole season due to transfer rules. But once he did take the field as the team's starter in 2006, things didn't go great. The Blue Hens went five and six that year. Following this rough season, Flacco felt like he wasn't going to make it to the league, so he asked his coach if he could play baseball. Flacco was shocked when his coach responded, baseball, you realize you're going to be a draft choice next year. And guess what? Flacco's coach's words started to become believable in 2007. Delaware went eight and three in that 2007 season and Joe Flacco was a huge reason why. He threw for over 4,000 yards, 23 touchdowns, and just five interceptions. The team made it all the way to the FCS championship game, but ultimately lost versus App State. Despite coming up just short of a championship, Flacco broke 20 school records by the end of that season. After an incredible senior season, Joe Flacco was on the path to the NFL Draft. Flacco had good performances at both the Senior Bowl and the NFL Combine, and even won the long distance throwing competition at ESPN's College All-Star Challenge. He threw a ball for 74 yards, which surpassed the throws of top QB prospects like Matt Ryan and Chad Henney. All of this helped his draft stock rise a lot. He was now considered a top five QB in the class and was even being compared to Ben Roethlisberger due to his size and arm strength. Flacco's pro day was unique unique to say the least. With Delaware only having four players drafted since the year 2000, pro days weren't really a big thing there. So Joe did his pro day workout on an uncut, unlined field in the rain with his own footballs. His perfect passes in the wind and rain caught the attention of the Baltimore Ravens, who have to play in cities known for their terrible weather later in the season, like Pittsburgh and Cleveland. On April 26, 2008, the Flacco family huddled in their living room around the television. Then Joe got a call. It was the Ravens informing him they were going to draft him 18th overall, making him the second quarterback selected behind Matt Ryan. Analysts were critical of the pick, 
calling in a reach and saying Flacco would have still been available in the second round. Heading into training camp, Flacco was expected to sit and learn his rookie season behind Kyle Bowler, but when Bowler suffered a season-ending injury during the preseason, Flacco was named the Raven starter for the 2008 season opener by first-year head coach John Harbaugh. Expectations weren't high for Baltimore in 2008 after finishing the previous season with a 5-11 record, but then something happened that no one saw coming. The Ravens started to win games, and a lot of them. Flacco and the Ravens finished the 2008 season with a shocking 11-5 record and clinched a playoff berth as a wildcard team. In the first round of the playoffs, the six-seed Ravens were set to face off with the three-seed Dolphins. Despite being the lower seed, the Ravens won 27-9 and were on to the divisional round where they would have to play the number one seed Titans. Yet again, the Ravens pulled off the upset and won 13-10. After this win, Flacco became the first rookie quarterback in history to win two playoff games. Baltimore was in the midst of a magical playoff run and were only one win away from making it to the Super Bowl with both a rookie head coach and quarterback. But to make it there, the Ravens had to take down their rivals, the two-seed Pittsburgh Steelers in the AFC Championship game. With just over four minutes left, the Ravens were down two on their own 29. Flacco dropped back to throw, but Troy Polamalu intercepted the pass and returned it for a touchdown to seal the Ravens' fate. The magical season was over, but the Ravens' future looked bright. The following season, Baltimore made the playoffs again as a six-seed wildcard team. Their first-round matchup was versus Tom Brady and the three-seed Patriots. In this game, Joe Flacco only completed four of his ten passes, but the Ravens still won thanks to their defense, forcing Brady to turn over the ball three times. Next up was Peyton Manning and the one seed Indianapolis Colts in the divisional round. Flacco threw for more than 10 times in this one, but the defense couldn't shut down the Colts offense and the Ravens ended up losing 20-3. to 2010 was Flacco's third season in the league and statistically his best one yet. And just like every other season he played in the NFL, the Ravens made it to the playoffs as a wildcard team. Flacco had the best playoff performance thus far in his career when the Ravens beat the Chiefs 30-7 in the wildcard round, but regressed the next week when the team lost yet again to the Pittsburgh Steelers in the divisional round. Heading into his fourth NFL season, many believed this could finally be the year Flacco made the leap to an elite level quarterback. While his stats for the season were pretty similar to the prior year, Flacco did have some pretty outstanding single-game performances, throwing for over 300 yards in four games that season. But most importantly, the Ravens were finally able to win the AFC North in 2011. After receiving a first-round playoff bye, the Ravens beat the Texans in the divisional round and were heading back to the AFC Championship for the first time since Flacco's rookie season. The Ravens had to beat the Patriots in Foxborough if they wanted to make it to the final game of the year. Throughout the game, Flacco was actually playing better than Tom Brady, but with 144 left, the Ravens found themselves down three at their own 20 with two timeouts. Flacco led his team all the way down the field to the New England 14 and came this close to throwing the game-winning touchdown. Even though Evans couldn't hold on for a touchdown, Flacco set kicker Billy Cundiff up for a 32-yard game-tying field goal, but this is what happened next. I mean, that wasn't even remotely close. The Ravens season was now over in heartbreaking fashion. Entering the 2012 season, Flacco was still not viewed as elite, and his regular season stats from the season pretty much backed that up. In 2012, Joe threw for 3,800 yards, 22 touchdowns, and 10 interceptions. Even though the Ravens finished the year with just 10 wins, they won the AFC North yet again. But no one had any faith in the team to make a serious playoff run after they lost four of the final five games during the regular season season. The Ravens hosted the Colts in the wildcard round, and Joe had his best playoff performance to date, throwing for 282 yards, two touchdowns, and no turnovers to help the team win 24-9. Next up was Peyton Manning and the number one seed Broncos in the divisional round. With 109 left, the Ravens were down a touchdown at their own 23 with no timeouts. Then with 41 seconds left in the game, the mile-high miracle happened to tie the game. So to overtime they went. 
well, actually to second overtime they went because no one scored a single point in that first 15 minutes of overtime. So in the second overtime, a Peyton Manning interception set the Ravens up close to field goal range. But of course, after last year's playoff disaster, the Ravens had a new kicker, this guy named Justin Tucker. So Tucker came out and hit the game-winning 47-yard field goal to send the team back to the AFC Championship game. Flacco finished that one with 330 passing yards, three touchdowns, and no interceptions. Baltimore and New England were set to face off for a second consecutive year in the championship game. Joe Flacco yet again outplayed Tom Brady, and the Ravens were finally going to the Super Bowl. For the second week in a row, Flacco threw for three touchdowns and no interceptions. Heading into the Super Bowl, Flacco was playing the best football of his life. He was on an absolute tear. Despite this, the Ravens were still four-point underdogs heading into the big game versus the 49ers. But in the biggest game of his life, Flacco decided to put up one of his best performances ever, completing 66% of his passes for 287 yards, three touchdowns, and no turnovers. The Ravens won the game, and Flacco was named Super Bowl MVP. After the Super Bowl win, Flacco was actually a free agent, so the Ravens gave him a contract track that made him the highest paid quarterback in NFL history. But after this life-changing moment, everything came crashing down for Joe Flacco. His first season after signing his new contract was his worst ever. In 2013, Flacco threw just 19 touchdowns and 22 interceptions. He also missed the playoffs for the first time in his NFL career. Flacco bounced back the following year, having probably the best season of his career, but the Ravens couldn't make it past the divisional round in the playoffs. Up to this point, Flacco had not missed a single game in his NFL career, but in week 11, of the 2015 season, Joe tore his ACL and MCL. But despite tearing both these ligaments, Flacco stayed in the game to help the Ravens get close enough for a game-winning field goal. After suffering this injury, Joe Flacco was never really the same. His numbers declined, and he never led the Ravens to another playoff appearance. When Baltimore traded up to draft Lamar Jackson in the 2018 draft, the writing was already on the wall. Flacco's time was coming to an end in Baltimore. After suffering a hip injury, Injury in week 9 of the 2018 season, Lamar Jackson took over as the starting QB and stayed on as the starter even when Flacco was healthy again. After the 2018 season, the Ravens traded Flacco to the Broncos for a fourth round pick. Quick thanks to the sponsor of today's video, Underdog Fantasy. I love playing Underdog's Pick'em games. And you know who's in super clutch for me in Underdog's Pick'em games? Joe Flacco. I keep picking the higher in Joe Flacco passing yards and it's been working. If you want to try playing Pick'em on Underdog, make sure you sign up using my promo code SHEGOTSPORTS. They'll match your first deposit up to $100 and you'll get a free Pick'em special, which is usually a player higher than half a yard, like Christian McCaffrey, higher than half a yard, Jalen Hurts, higher than half a yard, something like that. Flacco was the Broncos' week one starter, but in week eight, he suffered a season-ending neck injury. In the eight games he played for Denver, Flacco went two and six, throwing for 1,800 yards, six touchdowns, and five interceptions. After the 29 season, Flacco was released by the Broncos and signed with the Jets to back up Sam Darnold. Darnold did injure his shoulder during the 2020 season, which allowed Flacco to start four games, but he didn't play well, completing just 55% of his passes. In 2021, Flacco signed with the Eagles to back up Jalen Hurts, but in October, the Eagles traded him back to the Jets for a sixth round pick after Zach Wilson went down with an injury. After seeing some action as Mike White's backup, Flacco resigned with the Jets heading into 2022. After Zach Wilson was injured during the preseason, Flacco got to start the first four games of the year for New York. His numbers weren't great, but he did get his first NFL win since 2019 when he threw for over 300 yards and four touchdowns in a crazy comeback win versus the Browns. So heading into the 2023 season, Joe Flacco was just chilling at home, helping take care of his kids, drive them around, do a lot of dad stuff. But in week 10, Browns starting quarterback Deshaun Watson broke his shoulder and was out for the season. Rookie Dorian Thompson Robinson took over as the team's starter the following week, 
but didn't look so good despite the team pulling out the win. But a few days earlier, a picture surfaced on Twitter of Joe Flacco boarding a plane to Cleveland, and the following Monday, he signed with the team's practice squad. DTR got to make the start the following week, but was injured during the game and replaced by PJ Walker. The Browns ended up being destroyed by the Broncos in that one, and they decided they needed to shake things up a bit. So the following week, Joe Flacco was the me starter versus the Rams. Despite Cleveland losing, Flacco showed some flashes and was given the chance to start the following week versus the Jaguars. It was in this game that Flacco really started to turn heads. He threw for over 300 yards and three touchdowns, which helped the Browns get back into the win column. Since that week 13 win, Joe hasn't lost and has had over 300 passing yards in every single game. This was also the first time in his career that Flacco has thrown for over 300 yards in three consecutive games. At 38 years old, Joe Flacco has the chance to go on another miraculous playoff run. This video is being recorded before the wildcard round, so depending on when it comes out, you might already know how Joe played in his first playoff game in a very long time.